Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of The Caring Generation. The Caring Generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, and everything in between. It's no surprise that needing care or becoming a caregiver changes everything. The Caring Generation is here to guide you along the journey to let you know that you're not alone. You are in exactly the right place to share stories, learn about caregiving programs and resources to help you and your loved ones plan for what's ahead. Invite your aging parents, spouses, family, and friends to listen to the show. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, share your idea with me by responding to my social media posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. In. Today, the topic is breaking caregiver promises. This could relate to a promise between spouses to care for each other in marriage vows, until death do us part. Or you might be a son or daughter promising mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa never to put them in a care community or a nursing home. You could be a friend making a promise to care for a friend. Breaking caregiver promises could also be breaking a promise you made to yourself to pursue one or more life goals. Family caregivers with good intentions make promises to care for loved ones because they have no idea what the future holds. This is the challenge of caregiving becoming a life role for which everyone is generally unprepared unless you have prior caregiving or professional health or care experience. During this show, we'll talk about the relationship between promises and feeling in control of life, knowing when promises should be broken or goals changed, and how to realign or adjust your life goals. If you have been a caregiver for some time, you may look back and realize that you had no idea what to expect. Devoting time and making long-term personal sacrifices to care for a parent or someone else was probably not at the top of your list of life goals. Caregiving experiences take life off track. I remember my dad saying, what was I thinking when things he was doing didn't go as expected. Caregiving is like that. As time passes, caregiving responsibilities continue to grow instead of decreasing. Caregivers may feel overwhelmed or worried about not having the skills to care for an elderly parent whose health is continuing to worsen. As a caregiver, your physical and mental health may be suffering. As a result, you may lack the energy and motivation to manage aspects of your life and be a caregiver. You may have searched endlessly for community support options on the internet and come up with nothing that matches your situation. Struggles may exist trying to navigate the healthcare system, doctors, insurance companies, hospitals, nursing homes. Some days, it all feels like it's too much. Yet, you worry about breaking caregiver promises. Wouldn't life be much easier if, like at a job, you could write a letter of resignation and give two weeks notice to move on to a situation that you believe will be better for you? I know family caregivers who dream of doing just that. But unfortunately, family caregiver relationships and marriages are a little more complicated. Most caregivers feel responsible for caring for loved ones, even when situations become more complex. 
Breaking caregiver promises can be complicated when age differences make commitments a little tricky. For example, lifespan differences between grandchildren caring for grandparents, adult children caring for parents, and spouses caring for spouses make this all more complicated. The word lifespan means the amount of time that a living organism like people have left to live. A simple example is that an 18-year-old has a longer lifespan than grandma or grandpa who is 90, assuming that there are no immediate health issues that are going to result in death. Lifespan makes a difference when we think about goals and the amount of control people feel they have over life situations. A grandparent may think that a grandchild can take care of them for years because the grandchildren are young and they have a lot of life ahead of them, while an elderly parent, on the other hand, may also expect to move into the home of their children. Caregiving responsibilities like these are life-changing. Everyone in a family has the right to choose, even though it may not feel like that. Whether you felt you did or did not, if you are a caregiver, you chose to be a caregiver through your actions, through helping. Your siblings who may not want to help care for aging parents are making a different decision. Making caregiver promises to do or not do something without thorough discussion that leads to an agreement between the caregiver and care receiver can be problematic if you don't have these discussions. Even when you don't know what can happen in care situations, you may not know how to have a thorough, detailed discussion with your parents. Knowing what to consider and what you might expect is an area where I help family caregivers through telephone and virtual consultations to discuss these types of concerns. Similarly, Unexpected changes in health result in internal conflict and stress for the person who needs care. All these feelings we carry around with us are based on our life experiences and our skills and, more importantly, how we respond and adapt to changing situations, which sometimes means breaking caregiver promises. Life from birth to death is a series of changes. Adult children and spouses become caregivers and make commitments and promises that change life goals. Caregivers may feel angry, resentful, helpless, hopeless, burned out. Choosing to adapt by revising goals into different goals is a coping strategy. Caregivers in the early years of caregiving begin in this manner, kind of. For example, a daughter or son give up a job to move closer to parents, thinking that this caregiver assignment or job will be short-term, maybe six months or a year. Mom or dad may have a terminal illness, and maybe they're supposed to die, but they improve and they keep holding on, they keep living. So the caregivers who gave up their job and moved to care for parents watch their lives pass by. And it might be two, five, or ten years later. Career advancement at an okay job came to a halt. The ability to earn and save income has been negatively affected. Maybe you wanted to get married and have children, which is now off the table, because you're past the age where having children is possible. Plus, because of the time you dedicate to care of a parent, you didn't meet the love of your life. Now, those goals you had seem impractical or unattainable? If so, it may be time to reevaluate the caregiver promise you made to yourself and to your parents. Let's talk about a similar situation for your elderly loved ones who had a significant change in health. They may have similar feelings of frustration because they can't do things they could do before. They may not feel well all the time. So, in this caregiving dynamic, the first response by your parents about needing help may have been an attempt to remain independent by saying, no, 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 we don't need any help. But over time, your parents' day-to-day -day reality confirms that they do need assistance, they do need help. 
Needing help can threaten the ego or self-esteem of anyone of any age. You don't have to be old not to want help. How many of you want to need help versus enjoying having support or helping someone else, which probably makes you feel good? That's why you become a caregiver. Accepting help is difficult for any person who wants to be seen as self-sufficient or wants to be seen as able to manage their own life. You might notice that your parents are struggling, yet they tell you that they don't need or want help initially. Agreement to accept help can depend on how the assistance is offered and provided. So if you tell your parents what to do, you know this may not work at all, the better route is to offer choices and explain the consequences. Offering choices works better for everyone, especially when a decision has to be made and you're not really sure what to do. Researching and offering options is one component of breaking caregiver promises. When you look at your life as a caregiver and the life of the person you care for, believe it or not, you are experiencing similar challenges in responding to and managing change. The way you respond depends on your life stage and whether you're willing to adapt. Let's talk about work opportunities, which may help this make a little more sense. I'll share two examples. The first is person number one. As person number one, your career goal is to be an accountant, which means going to school to learn accounting and related courses. You start this way and realize halfway through college that you thought you would love accounting, but you don't like working with numbers as much as you thought. You want to finish college, so you decide to change your focus to becoming a high school teacher. You complete your degree and take the steps necessary to get a teaching job. Then you think, I like this. Maybe teaching at the college level would be something I would like. So you continue working and you attend school part-time to obtain your master's degree. That's another change. It's another shift, another adaptation. But it works for you because you're motivated. You have the energy you want to learn and you want to hit that goal. Now, this isn't to say that you didn't struggle with a class or two in the middle of this adventure or that there were not times when you didn't think you could continue going to school and working full time. Accomplishing goals is not always easy. But in this situation, along the way, you learned how to deal with missed expectations, maybe a few failures. You may have had to modify how you look at situations, change your behavior, your schedules, adjust your perspective. Somewhere along the way, though, you learned how to persist, stay interested in learning, and manage through all of those emotional ups and downs. Getting that master's degree to teach at the college level, it was a long road. But you considered and committed to the long term and traded time for self-development today instead of going on vacation every year or buying a new car like some of your friends. Let's look at person number two. You gave up pursuing a college education in favor of full-time work. Now you look back realizing that your advancement potential is limited because a college degree is required to be considered for the next position you want. But you like your job and you decide to stay there and give up that advancement potential. So what insights can be gained from these two examples that relate to breaking caregiver promises to yourself and maybe to a parent? The first lesson is about having a focused goal and being single-minded about pursuing the goal while dealing with ups and downs. This person may be better at navigating the continually changing caregiving landscape because of not having any hesitation to ask for help or to learn. Person number one may realize the benefits of delayed gratification, working hard today to accomplish something in the future by giving up a lot of things today. Person number two, though, pursued their career dream, but then they got stalled and decided, at least for now, that staying in the current job was okay versus going to college, which at the time seemed like too much work for too little benefit. Additionally, for this person, the idea of book learning wasn't appealing, a four-year college degree completed part-time could translate into eight years of painful study. So instead, this person chose to spend their extra time coaching softball for their son's team at school. So even though this person chose differently, he succeeded in modifying a goal. And so relating that to caregiving, it could be saying, 
gosh, I would like my parents' health to get better. I would love them to do all these things. But I realize that they think that's too much, okay? And so if that's too much, what other goals can we set that are acceptable to them and that I can help them with? So how do we describe these types of modifying behaviors? A classic term for this is disengagement. And it means separating from or releasing an attachment to a plan or an outcome. Both individuals in this case succeeded in disengaging and re-engaging, even though their goals and approach were different. These examples relate to approaching caregiving responsibilities. There is no one right way, even though some caregivers who want everything done their way might disagree with that. The same applies to elderly parents who may approach their care needs differently. Each side has a right to their opinions and the way they want to live and what they're willing to do. As long as coping strategies exist to respond to the changes, potential downsides, unexpected outcomes, the idea of breaking caregiver promises can be positive. Problems arise when individuals feel like they are fighting a losing battle to accomplish something, and they continue to struggle rather than revise the strategy or the goal. It's kind of like, you know, hitting your head up against that brick wall. If you're a caregiver, simple example, you may want to go to school or move out of a parent or a grandparent's home to live on your own if you've been that live-in caregiver. Now, I'm not saying to give up on your dreams or whatever you want to do in life. I'm saying that sometimes we have to be realistic about the situation, what we want, what another person wants, our abilities, their abilities, practical about events that we control and that we don't control. For family caregivers, this can mean that a lot of your life seems uncertain because you may be delaying making decisions based on the health of elderly parents or spouse or somebody else, which you really can't predict. So you also want to look at the output of where your efforts are today. What are you getting back from your efforts? What are the results? Are the results positive? Or is there some ongoing struggle here that if you recognized it, holds a lesson for you that would help you readjust. Let's take a break and talk about taking as much control of your life as possible by disengaging and re-engaging in specific actions to avoid breaking caregiver promises after the break. Pay it forward to help others dealing with health, aging, or caregiving issues by sharing information about this show and my website, PamelaDWilson.com. The Caring Generation is available worldwide on your favorite podcast and music apps. Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, GeoSavin, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Breaker, Deezer, Listen Notes, Pandora, Player FM, Pocket Cast, Podcast Addict, Podchast, Podchaser, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and Verbal. You don't have to go it alone. Caregiving doesn't have to be a do-it-yourself job. Visit my website to schedule a one-to-one telephone or video consultation with me. Click on the How I Help tab at the top then family caregivers, and then elder care consultation. This is Pamela D. Wilson on The Caring Generation. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, author, and speaker on The Caring Generation. Thank you for following and communicating with me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and my YouTube channel, where there are hundreds of videos responding to your caregiving questions. The questions you ask allow me to create these videos and these Caring Generation podcasts for you. Visit my website and follow the show on your favorite music or podcast apps. There are over 100 episodes. Let's return to talk about breaking caregiver promises to yourself and others. Are you a caregiver who jumped feet first into a care situation without a formal conversation about care responsibilities, time commitments, and so on? It's okay. This is usually how being a caregiver begins, very innocently. How do you know when it's time to revise your goals and expectations to make a different plan. 
While considering making any change may have you feeling uncomfortable, it may be best for everyone involved, although it can be hard to see that when you are in the thick of things. Elderly parents can be used to routines that have been stable for years. In this case, your parents' tendency tendency may be to reject change and react very negatively if you make any suggestions. If you are a caregiver who is emotionally burned out and experiencing physical health issues, a change in the situation may be necessary. When parents are so focused on their needs, they can't see how anyone else, including the caregiver, may be affected. Caregivers in these situations can have difficulty acknowledging that they may be going through the day-to-day motions but may not be providing good care for a parent anymore because they're exhausted, they're tired, they're burned out. Family caregivers have good intentions, but the state of one's emotional and physical health should not be disregarded. It shouldn't be discounted, pushed to the bottom of the pile as being unimportant. If you are a caregiver who has delayed life events that are important to you, school, marriage, career, recognize that your contributions, caring for a loved one, have been valuable, and it may be time to take steps forward. Do the best you can to set goals, figure out what those are, and create a plan. At the same time, research alternative care situations for parents. Simple question, where do you start? The first step to moving forward from breaking caregiver promises is to prepare mentally for this future. Without the right mindset and motivation, you will remain stuck and it'll be difficult to set goals and to find solutions. Just like a gym routine and exercise improves body strength, you may need to start by creating a mindset routine that includes positive thinking and motivation. While the tendency for caregivers and really anybody frustrated with a situation is to dwell on that frustration, to be angry, you have to stop that. Negative thinking will continue to hold you down instead of raising you up to a place where your mind only sees future possibilities. Like in the two examples we discussed in the first part of the program with those two individuals, you want to find goals that motivate you. What is it you want to change or accomplish? And have you written a step-by-step plan of how you will make this happen? How confident are you that you can achieve the goal based on your experience and knowledge? Or do you need to go to a counselor or see someone for some outside help and motivation? If you don't have your plan in writing, or if you lack confidence, go back to that drawing board until you have a well-thought-out plan and the confidence to work through the change. Are you 100% committed? How will you respond to uncertainties or blocks that arise as you work through this plan? Are you willing to ask for help and do the necessary research, including learning new things and changing your habits and your thought patterns? Making significant changes takes work and effort. Change doesn't happen without the person initiating or wanting that change being open to all options. And this can really take a change in mindset. How many of you have heard the saying, when you close one door, another opens? It's true. Moving through change and setting new goals involves the process of disengaging and re-engaging. The faster you can reconcile in your mind, giving up one goal to define and pursue another goal, while throwing yourself 100% into that pursuit, the quicker you will progress. You have to free up your mind and your brain to think differently. Being practical and realistic about what you can accomplish is critical. It can be challenging to accept that a current caregiving relationship or situation isn't working out as much as you would like. Change doesn't mean that you are abandoning your loved one or your goals. It means that you are changing up the way that care is provided for a loved one, so that all of the work doesn't fall on you, and you're creating new goals. Now, we all know setting a goal and not getting there can result in feeling disappointed or stuck. And if you've done this in the past, you may be hesitant to set a goal because you think, I don't know if I can do this. 
Start with the mindset. Start with thinking positively. And the best way to avoid breaking caregiver promises is to put in that step-by-step process for you and your elderly parent. So X is what you will do for caregiving responsibilities, and Y is what you are asking your parent to do for themselves. Your parents should commit to how they will support their health and well-being throughout this change. The challenge will be that your parent may not be able or interested in participating in change due to poor health. If they have Alzheimer's and dementia, that's another challenge. They may not feel well, lack energy, not be motivated, and really not interested in changing or learning. A parent or spouse's unwillingness to change, though, does not mean that you are stuck unless there are extraordinary circumstances like you being financially dependent on parents or a spouse for money. If that's the situation, creating and working out a plan is going to take more effort. There are a lot more things to consider. However, if the care of your loved one is at risk because you are burned out, sick and exhausted, if your health is at risk, your mental health, your physical risk, your physical health is at risk, you have a duty to do something. You have a duty to initiate change because both of your situations are failing. While caregivers may want the best for parents, pushing mom or dad to take actions that they don't wish to participate can cause more damage or stress to the caring relationship. Just as pushing yourself to move forward can cause you more stress. So we have to be honest that this is difficult, okay? And just the opposite, I also want to acknowledge care situations where parents are verbally abusive to family caregivers. These can be impossible situations for children who try to continually do their best, but they're constantly criticized or berated for their actions. They're told, you never do enough, you're doing this wrong, you know, why can't you accept 20 phone calls a day at work? Parents just don't understand. And so this abusive situation isn't good for the caregiver, especially when the parent may have some type of mental illness or cognitive impairment. The goal in this case would be to create a new environment for both the caregiver and the parent, one where the caregiver is not subjected to the daily care needs of an abusive parent, and the other where the parent receives care from people that have no personal connection. And by this, I mean people working in a care community so that the caregivers then are less emotionally affected by these behaviors because they don't have 20, 30, 40, 50 years of these family triggers and family relationships. They can put this care into a better perspective. Caregiving can be unbalanced in relationships. It's not always possible to want the same things or have the same goals as the people that we care for because we are in a different life stage. Your parents may be in a winding down stage because of their health or their lifespan. Maybe they only have another five or ten years to live while you're young and you feel like you have a lot of things you want to accomplish in the years that you have left. So so you have these competing goals. If this is the situation with the person you care for, the best you can do is to help them adjust to whatever goals might be feasible or practical. For the caregiver, this might feel like defeat because you may see this change as the reflection of your work and effort as not being successful for your parents. While it might be true to some degree, there is a point where Another person's quality of life and health is truly out of our control. We can try to control things as much as possible, but the unexpected is always going to happen. In this situation, it's important for the caregiver and the care receiver to avoid blame for these goals or the care plan not working out as hoped or expected. There are a lot of steps and a lot of considerations that go into this. Do your best to avoid disappointment and realize that it is okay to set and revise goals based on life situations at the time. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Keep moving ahead and knowing that there are going to be setbacks in the future and potential losses in the future. But if you balance your emotions, you'll be more able to manage through those. If you want to, have a good cry and then find a way to regroup to get back on the path toward your goal. 
Most of all, find a way to become and stay emotionally strong. This is your best opportunity to help you maintain a high level of self-esteem and confidence and motivation and positive thinking to win against whatever odds you feel you might be facing. Thank you so much for joining me for this program, caregivers. I know it's a difficult subject, but there is a path forward for everyone. If you want to share your story or have a request for a podcast topic, a video, or an article, visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, and go to the Contact Me drop-down in the top navigation bar. Click on Caregiving Survey and share your ideas and thoughts with me. Please share The Caring Generation and my website with everyone you know who is interested in proven, reliable tips, information, resources, and research about caregiving, aging, health, and everything in between. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you all. Sending love to everyone. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and a great week until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.